Welcome back students. Uh, so, last three lectures we have studied Buckingham Pi theorem, solved some problems, solved uh, three different problems actually and see how do we choose the problems. There was at one point in the lectures where I told what if we choose a different set of repeating variables. So, the topic related to that is called uniqueness of pi term and that is what we are going to start with today. Okay. So, uniqueness of pi term. So, now if we go back to our example of pressure drop, but choose a different repeating variable d, v and mu for example. All right. If we evaluate, we will find that the first pi term is going to be delta p l d square and multiplied by v into mu. Okay. The other pi term will remain the same on the analysis. All right. So, we get a, a slightly different pi term here. Okay. So, this is the another relationship. Okay. But we note that the left hand side, so the left hand side is this delta p l d square. So, I will write it down L h s actually is delta p l d square v into mu okay? and that is simply what we had before multiplied by Reynolds number. Okay? All right, so you remember uh, what the la last time what the um, what the pi term that we got was we go back and find out delta p l d by rho v square multiplied by Reynolds number rho v d by mu. So this v and v gets cancelled this d d becomes uh, rho and rho gets cancelled. So, that is correct. So, this new L h s actually is old L h s multiplied by Reynolds number. All right. So, it will become delta p l d square by v mu. So, we have actually seen that the L h s is simply what we had before multiplied by the Reynolds number. You see here. So, this is old L h s, this is Reynolds number and this is new L h s. Okay, a left hand side of the same equation. So, the as conclusion is there is not a unique set of pi terms, but rather a set number of pi terms. In this case, there are always two. So, there are no unique set of pi terms, but a set number of pi terms. So, that the number of pi terms will remain fixed is two. What will that be? That is not. Uh, fixed. If we take 3 pi terms, we can form another by multiplying. Okay. So, if there is pi 1 is equal to 5 pi 2 comma pi 3. So, we can form 1 by multiplying pi 2 to the power a pi 3 to the power b. Fine. Or pi 1 is a function of pi 2 dash comma pi 3, where this is pi 2. And this is what exactly has happened in the last problem that we, last question that we were doing. All right. Or pi 1 can be written as a function of pi 2 comma pi 2 dash, because it all already contains pi 3. So, not a problem. So, if this is the original case, we can always write pi 1 is again a function of pi 2 dash comma pi 3 or pi 2 comma pi 2 dash and pi 2 dash is the simple multiplication to raise to the power a and b of pi 2 and pi 3. 
because this will also contain both pi 2 and pi 3, this will also contain pi 2 and pi 3. Okay? So, often the set of pi terms chosen is based on previous flow analysis. So, what pi terms will come is generally chosen by the previous flow. So, when a flow comes terms like Reynolds number, Froude number, those things are very, very important. And because of those previous experiences, we try to modify our, uh, you know, um, uh, pi terms, dimensionless pi term using these, this analysis, you know, multiplying with another dimensionless numbers and things like that to obtain those well known set of dimensionless pi terms. So, as we said, there are some set of very famous, you know, dimensionless numbers, what are those? So, most important is Reynolds number the dimensionless groups is written as rho v l by mu all right and reynolds number by definition is ratio of the inertia force by viscous force all right it is generally of an, i mean it is very important in all types of fluid dynamics problems reynolds number will be there in any flow problems Another such quantity is Froude number. So, it is given by V under root G L and Froude number is the ratio of inertial forces by gravitational force. Reynolds number was inertial force by viscous forces whereas, Froude number is the ratio between inertia force and gravitational force. It is important in flows with a free surface. For example, when we will study open channel flow, we will see Froude number is an important quantity. There is another number that is Euler number which is E u given by p by rho v square. It gives the ratio between the pressure force and the inertia force. What type of applications this is important to? it is with problems in which pressure or pressure differences are of interest. Okay? There is another number called Cauchy number. Cauchy number is given by rho v square by E v. It is the ratio of the inertia force by the compressibility force. So, Cauchy number is important in flows in which the compressibility of the fluid is important. So, what we assume water is incompressible, but there are fluids like air where the compressibility is important and in those type of flows Cauchy number is important. There is another very famous uh, dimensionless groups called Mach number. It is given by V by C, you know. And uh, so, this is not correct, it is related to the sound. Okay. So, this is the velocity, fluid velocity by the speed of sound okay. and uh, this is required in applications like aeroplanes. So, sorry for this uh, error here, uh, typing error. There is another number called Strauhal number. The Strauhal number is given by omega L by V. It is the ratio of the inertial forces, local forces by inertia convective forces. It is important in unsteady flow with the characteristic frequency of oscillation. This also plays an important role. The finally, there is one number called Weber number W E, which is the ratio between the inertia and the surface tension forces and it is very important, this number is important in which surface tension is important. So, you have, I mean I have gone through this type of applications where such flows are important. When you get a question or when you are doing experiments, please see the type of experiments you are doing and in which category they are falling and while doing the dimensional analysis, you should keep in mind which number to arrive at. For example, in any flow problems, best is to obtain the Reynolds number and Froude number. Froude number when the gravity plays a role, for example, open channel flow. 
uh, but Reynolds number will likely be there in all the you know fluid flow related problems. So yeah, so this is a brief you know overview. I will go a little bit more detail into some of the important numbers that I have discussed. So Reynolds number here is given by rho v l by mu, right? Uh, this was given by Osborne Reynold. So Osborne Reynold was a British engineer who demonstrated that Reynolds number could be <coughs> could be used as a criterion to distinguish laminar and turbulent flow. If Reynolds number is very much less than 1, viscous forces dominate okay? and we neglect the inertial effects and this is called creeping flows which we have already seen when we were doing the Stokes, Stokes uh, derivation. If Reynolds number is large, inertial effects dominate and we neglect viscosity. Okay? The other is Froude number, this is given by V under root G L. William Froude it was a British civil engineer and mathematician who pioneered the use of towing tank to study ship design. The Froude number is only dimensionless group that contains acceleration of the gravity, thus indicating that the weight of fluid is important in these flows. So, gravity is very important. This is important to flows that include waves around ship flows through river or open conduits as I said open channel flow. Okay? We have been talking about it. Euler number, so it was given by Leonard Euler and he was and Leonard Euler was a Swiss mathematician who pioneered the work between the pressure and flow. So, Euler number is the ratio of pressure forces to inertial forces. Sometimes this is also called the pressure coefficient. Euler number is used in flows where pressure differences may play a crucial role. We have already discussed this. Mach number is the ratio of V by C. Here C is the speed of sound and it was given by Ernst Mach as Austrian he was an Austrian physicist and philosopher. The number is important in flows in which there is compressibility you know because uh, it has to do something with the speed of sound as well. Strauhal number uh, given by Vincent Strauhal, he studied singing wires which result from vortex shedding. This dimensionless group is important in unsteady and oscillating flow problems. Okay? And this oscillating flow has if say pose has a frequency of oscillation omega and this is how this is given. It is it, it gives a measure of unsteady inertial forces to steady inertial forces, unsteady inertial forces to steady inertial forces and this is quite an important you know number. So, in certain Reynolds number ranges a periodic flow will develop downstream from a cylinder placed in a moving fluid due to regular pattern of vortices that are shed from the body. The series of trailing vortices are known as von Karman vortex trail named after Theodore von Karman, a famous fluid mathematician. As the oscillating flow is created at discrete frequency such as Strahal numbers can closely be related to Reynolds number. You know? So, in vortex shedding this is this is Strahal number is very important and this was given by Theodore von Karman. He is a very very famous name we have heard about him in the last week's lecture as well. So, you are coming back to the dimension less group. Suppose if only one pi terms a pi term exists in a fluid phenomenon, the functional relationship must be a constant that is true. Suppose if there is pi 1 right and normally if there is pi 1 comma pi 2 we simply write pi 1 is equal to function of pi 2 right. But if there is only 1, then pi 1 must be constant, that is simple. Okay? So, pi 1 is equal to c and this constant must be determined from the must be determined from the experiments. 
if we have two pi terms we must be careful not to over extend the range of applicability, but the relationship can be presented pretty easily graphically. So, pi 1 is a function of pi 2 simple something like that you know and there will be a valid range for example, we can say this is the valid range. So, we I mean this 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 is applic applicability while you conducting experiments you know we would be knowing what the valid range is we simply cannot go from say for example, minus infinity to plus infinity there should be some you know logical range and finite range in which these relationship like phi 1 is equal to phi function of pi 2 would be applicable other places may be the theory that is behind that starts to break ok. I mean break means starts to fail does not hold true in that regime. If we have 3 pi groups we can represent the data as a series of curves. However, as the number of pi term increase the problem becomes less tractable and we may resort to modeling specific characteristic. So, with 1 with 2 it we had we had only one curve right, but if the number of dimensionless group increases we will have more number of curves something like this. You see pi 1 as a function of pi 2 when pi 3 is equal to c 1 when pi 3 is equal to one constant when pi 3 is equal to another constant when you know. So, things like this can happen all right. So, uh, I think uh, before uh, going I think uh, this actually concludes our dimensionless groups and you know and we are going to start now with another topic that is called similitude. So, we will give some you know basic idea of what a similitude is all right. So, why similitude is needed? So, often we want to use models to predict real flow phenomenon all right. So, this is a model for example, uh, we obtain similarity between a model and a prototype by equating the pi terms that is how we do it in real life ok. In these terms we must have geometric kinematic and dynamic similarity all right. What is a geometric similarity? A model and a prototype are geometrically similar if and only if all the body dimensions in all the three coordinates have the, have the same linear scale ratio. For example, if there is a ship 100 meter long, 100 meter wide and let us say um, 10 meter deep ok. And if we have to have a geometric similarity in a lab and we can create. So, what we have to do? We will create 1 meter long, 1 meter wide and set say 10 centimeters deep ship and this is called the having the same linear scale ratio. Here linear scale ratio was 100 the example which I just spoke ok. So, L 1 by L 2 this is prototype this is model all right or exactly as I said L 1 m by L 1 is equal to L 2 m by L 2 model ship prototype ok. In this case if we do that all the angles will be preserved, all flow directions are going to be the same and the orientations will also be the same. So, we do not have to worry about anything else. So, this is geometric similarity. 
So, things that must be considered that are overlooked. So, generally so there are some of the things that are overlooked when we try to do that. One is roughness and was scale of fasteners protruding. So, basically roughness. Roughness is like friction at the bed for example, in the rivers. So, those things are generally overlooked because that also has to be scaled, but unfortunately we cannot scale them. It is very difficult to manipulate friction at the you know bed. It is very difficult to find the stones of such order and things like that. And also in the ship you know friction due to the ship surface. Those are generally overlooked. So, geometric similarity scale 1 is to 10th has been shown here. If you see this object, this is a wing. So, you see this length is 40 meters here okay? and this has been brought down by 10 times therefore, this length is 4 meter. Okay? We will go one by one and show you. So, this was 8 meters this long. So, this is 0 0.8 meters. So, also a ratio of 10. All right. So, this was 10 meters thick. Oh, sorry, 1 meters thick and 10 times less is 0 0.1 meters thick. Okay. So, you see all the three dimensions we have we have given the scale ratio of 1 by 10 and the angle was 10 degrees which is preserved here as 10 degrees. You see that okay? and all the directions and the flow directions I mean that does not really you know change. So, what we have done is we have done the geometric similarity 1 is to 10th in all the 3 dimensions length, breadth and height. All right. Now, there is another term called kinematic similarity. Kinematic similarity means kinematic is related to speed, right. So, this means if we have the same length scale ratio and same time scale ratio, the motion of the system is kinematically similar if homologous particles lie at homologous location at homologous times, all right. And to be able to do that, if homologous particle light homologous location at homologous times, basically having same length scale ratio and same time scale ratio, to be able to do that, this requires equivalence of dimensionless group. Now, which ones? For kinematic similarity, Reynolds number should be equated, Froude number should be equated and numbers like Mach numbers etcetera, because that has something to do with the kinematics of the flow. All right. So, for a flow, let us see a flow in which Froude number and Reynolds number is important. Length scale, so for Froude number similarity, we can write V m by under root G m L m. This is Froude number in model is equal to V by under root G L and this is Froude number in prototype let us say or you know. All right. This will give us V m by V so, V m V will come this side, it will become G and G will cancel because G will remain the same wherever uh, you know on earth we are at the same height. So, V m by V is equal to under root L m by L, L. If we say the ratio of L m by L is lambda L. Okay. So, the for Froude number similarity, the length scale will have to depend upon the ratio of lambda l to the power half. Okay. Now, for Reynolds number similarity, we have rho m v m l m by mu m is equal to. So, this is model 
and this is the prototype. So, we, we do V m by V is equal to mu m by mu rho by rho m L by L m. Okay? So, then we call we divide mu m by rho m it becomes kinematic viscosity in model by divided by kinematic viscosity in prototype. All right. All right. Yeah. So, this is I will just because we have skipped something here. So, you would not understand. So, so, V m by V we already know what we have got from the Froude number similarity right. What was V m by V under root lambda L correct and this is 1 by lambda L correct. So, we can write mu m by rho m is nu m divided by mu by rho nu is equal to lambda l multiplied by this will this will go here right into lambda l. So, nu m by nu comes out to be lambda l to the power 3 by 2. Okay? So, this might be confusing, confusing that is why I just showed you how this we get. All right. So, now if we have to have the same time scale ratio. So, time scale will be L m by V m divided by L m by V. So, it is what is what is going to be L m by L. So, let us say L m by L divided by V by V m na yes. Okay. So, this is under del lambda l divided by this is sorry. So, l m by l m is lambda l right and this is so, v m by v. Okay. Let me just take this one again, so that it is you know. So, so, T m by T can be written as L m by L okay, divided by V m by V. So, L m by L m is lambda L and V m by V from the previous slide we found out was. Okay. So, this is how we get this here. All right. Now, the dynamic similarity. So, in dynamic similarity, we have the same length scale, time scale and force scale. So, all the length scale, time scale and all the three scales are required to have dynamic similarity. First, satisfy the geometric and kinematic similarity, correct and then dynamic similarity then exist if the force and pressure coefficients are the same in order to ensure that the ensure that the force and pressure coefficients are the same. For example, in compressible flow Reynolds number, Mach number and specific heat ratio must be matched. For incompressible Reynolds number match is good enough and with for incompressible flow with a free surface Reynolds number, Froude number and also Weber number in case if there is a surface tension must be matched. So, for all the practical problems of hydraulics. Uh, for the dynamic similarity, we have to match the Reynolds number and Froude number. I mean, if exists the Weber number, then Weber number as well. But um, practically, these two numbers must be matched for, you know, dynamic similarity. <coughs> so.
So, I think uh, the end of the similitude, we are going to start with model scale in our next lecture, but I think this is a nice point to stop and we resume and we build up upon the similitude and study the model scales and solve some questions on the slides and also if time permits we will some solve some problems on the whiteboard as well. And uh, we will start with this topic here model scales and uh, before that I will see you in the next class. Thank you so much.